So over the past few days, I was lucky enough to get early access to a new Claude model that is releasing today. I want to give you why you should care, what you should expect versus the other models out there, and where it really is going to make a difference. So stick with me for the next 10 or 15 minutes, and we're going to get through what to make of this model, and you'll be able to figure out whether it's useful for you. Number one, what were my first impressions and top takeaways? I tested this model inside Claude Code. I tested this model creating PowerPoint decks. I tested this model creating spreadsheets. I tested it creating docs. I tested its thinking. I really put it through its paces and I benchmarked it against ChatGPT5, which is, of course, OpenAI's Frontier model, and also against Opus 4.1, which is the current Frontier model from Claude before today. And I wanted to know what was going to stand out to me. I spend hundreds and hundreds of hours in AI models. I'm very familiar with sort of the look and feel differences. And I wanted to get hands on early to see if I could tell a difference. Spoiler alert, it was a big difference. And I'm not saying that because I want to hype the model. No model is perfect. But I think that this model moves the ball forward in some really important ways for people who care about getting work done. And frankly, that's actually in line with Anthropic's larger strategy. If you look at the two big players, OpenAI and Anthropic, OpenAI continues to lean very consumer. Anthropic is adopting a specialized stance of leaning into professional AI. What does it mean to have professionals work with AI by choice and pick Anthropic on purpose to get their work done? How does Anthropic help them move their work deliverables forward. The signatures for that strategy were all over this model. I did a very popular guide a few weeks ago talking about Opus 4.1 when it released and emphasizing it was the first model that actually got as far as creating really usable spreadsheets, really usable PowerPoints, which had been a really, really tough bar to meet for AI previously. Well, this new model beats that. This new bundle beats Opus 4.1, and I, and I put them head to head, and I did not give them an easy assignment. They had tough assignments. They had to make tough, you know, 11 or 12 slide SaaS decks. They had to make docs in an Amazon PRFAQ style. I really put them through their paces. And what stood out to me as a human observer, as someone who wants these tools to work with us in the workplace, is that this new model is what enables me to see clearly where I need to intervene. We talk a lot about AI automating, AI picking up work from us, but I've been thinking a lot about this idea that the most valuable AI is the AI that helps you to see clearly when you as a good human in your domain with deep experience needs to touch the work. And this model, more than ChatGPT5, more than Opus 4.1, it's clear enough in its narrative that you can see really clearly what it's trying to go for. And you can see really clearly where you need to touch the work to make it better. And so if you think about it within the context of a larger, say, deck preparation workflow, a spreadsheet model preparation workflow, this model is going to speed the time it takes to get these important pieces of work done. And it does that in a number of useful ways. And I want to call out sort of the gritty hands-on notes that I have so that you can start to think about it. One of the first takeaways as you work with this model, it's getting to that level of quality, that level of clarity on narrative by checking its work a lot more than previous models did. One of the hallmarks of the current Claude style is that you have this running commentary from the model that shows you what tools it's invoking and what it's thinking about at the moment. It's sort of an express chain of thought. This model is expressing an obsession I think that's the right word, an obsession with checking its work and fixing it. Multiple times when it was creating PowerPoint decks, I saw it measure the pixel overlap between title text and a particular visual element, correct itself and say that's not right and redo the slide. It didn't come to me and make me do that. It caught it itself. That's a big deal. It also took the time to check the formulas and spreadsheets. When it was showing me a code project I was working on, it was actually going through the Next.js framework and it was validating that it could start and run the dev server before coming back and telling me it could. I gotta say, ChatGPT5 just likes to say it can do stuff, right? Like there's just a sort of a commitment to talk that ChatGPT5 has. I'm not here to tell you which model to pick. This video should not be interpreted as me saying, pick only this model to work. We live in a multi-model world. I want you to get a sense of where this model is really useful. And I think it's right in line with where Anthropic is going. This model is going to be useful 
in dramatically cutting down the grunge time that we have spent on work, where you are just wading through a lot of messy inputs, where you are trying to figure out how you can understand a complicated spreadsheet, where you are trying to write a draft and you just feel like your head is mush and you don't know how to get the words on the page, but they need to be really clear. They can't just be any old AI slop. That's where this model is going to excel. I'll give you an example. I fed this model 66 pages of PDF voice of customer insights. So it was all like quotes, right? Things that were out of order, not organized in any way. I just wanted to see like what it would do with raw customer utterance. And you know what it did? It was able to analyze it. And then this model in particular was able to extract meaningful narrative from it. And I think that's really important to reflect on because those kinds of insights don't make themselves happen. I used to run voice of customer when I was at Amazon. It was really, really hard to manually go through a bunch of customer utterances and they just start to meld together in your brain. It's hard to get narrative. It's hard to attach a quote to a particular insight. This is the first model I've seen that can in one shot go from a big model of customer quotes to an executive ready narrative arc in a PowerPoint presentation. Now, is it the most beautiful PowerPoint I've ever seen? No. Is it better even than the 4.1 that I thought was usable? It actually is. This is the first PowerPoint presentation AI creation tool that has made something that is so close to ready that I would call it 90% ready to go out of the gate. A little bit of polish here and there, but that's really it. And what's handy about that is it does it in just a few minutes, which gives you a chance to do multiple iterations. Remember when I said earlier in this video that part of why I'm excited about this model is it puts us humans back in touch with the work. That clarity of narrative is what I have needed to wade through AI slop and actually find something useful. And I saw it come through not just in Dex, but in the clarity of presentation and spreadsheets, in the clarity of working with it in Claude Code. It felt like working with a good thinking partner. We were able to quickly establish a file structure to work together. It was just a dream. And in the clarity of doc writing, like it was like clear narrative and didn't feel like I had to wade through AI slop. And so if I, if I think about that and I think about the minutes it takes to make this, I realize as a human who cares about good work and doing it well, I have multiplied my time. And it's not that I've multiplied my time to put out more 90% good artifacts. I have given myself a shot at doing two or three of these and having progressive inputs as I look at the narrative and I shape it and I think about whether that's what I want to say. And it's relatively trivial in 30 minutes or 40 minutes to come out with exactly what I want because each iteration now takes five or six minutes to make with this new Claude model. It's really easy. And if you're wondering how prompt sensitive the model is. This one's really interesting. I haven't seen this in any other model, and I would be curious for your take as you play with it. When I played with it, I found that it was surprisingly useful regardless of the prompt structure I applied. And so I applied a super formal prompt structure, and I also applied a very casual prompt structure, which was just two or three lines plus a bunch of data. In both cases, I got a very usable output was healthy. It was happy. It was the kind of PowerPoint you want to show around the office. It was great. It was not a problem. And that was also the case with spreadsheets. It was also the case with docs. And if that holds up, if you're seeing that as well, what that suggests is that Anthropic is doing enough reinforcement learning on office primitives like docs, like decks, like PowerPoint, that it's figuring out what we want from shorter and smaller and more casual utterances, which is a really big deal. Because one of the things that has made people really frustrated with ChatGPT5 is that it is sensitive to prompting. I don't think it's an accident that, that the ChatGPT team has had to release prompt packs aimed at ChatGPT5. You know who hasn't had to do that? Anthropic. They haven't had to do it. Because the model does a better job of understanding the kind of work that you want and just going for it. And this gets at one of the larger takeaways that I think is really interesting. Anthropic is betting on our future for the next few years, at least, being somewhat similar to what we have today. Despite all the big hype and all the big takeaways, they're investing in a world where we will still need PowerPoints, where we will still need spreadsheets, where we will still need 
the ability to run Claude code as a human and get something that boots on a dev server. And what they're betting is that what we need is clearer and more professional outputs that we can understand more easily. And that in turn will mean that we take less time on the grunge of our work. Because to be honest, no one wants to trade the grunge of the old way of doing things pre-2022, where we were just doing everything by hand and get the new way of doing things. And it's just AI slop. And we're just waiting through that. And that's a terrible slog instead. I had to yell at chat GPT-5 just yesterday because I asked it for an outline with three elements and it came back with seven. And I said, you didn't put the time in on the three I asked you and, you, and you're just so hyper excited that you came back with, with a bunch of extra. And that's a tiny little story. And it's not isolated only to chat GPT-5. Slop is a threat to our ability to realize the gains of AI workflows and AI productivity. And so one of the things I'm excited about is that there's some clarity in the work produced by this model that I think enables us to get back to creating really useful pieces of work, whether they're code, or spreadsheets or PowerPoints or what have you, and then focusing on whether they're right and then iterating if they're not. And that becomes a workflow that I can get excited about because it's less sloppy and it fits into how teams already make decisions. I also think the idea of checking your work is something that we'll start to see from other models. I know models are being trained using tooling where there is some recursive looping and checking of your work. This model is by far the most thoughtful and careful about it that I have seen so far. This model really cares to understand how your prompt maps to a particular piece of work and it cares to get it right. Now you might wonder, Nate, you've been talking a lot about docs and sheets and code and decks. Does this thing only do that? And the answer is no. I actually have used it for conversations as well. I've used it to sort of like get a sense of its thinking and its ability, how it does if I ask it to produce a response just in the chat. And I get that same sense of clarity. It's a model that really wants to cut through the noise. And it's a model that is able to give you some backbone. And I think that's somewhat related to its ability to check its work. It has a sense of rightness. It has a sense of what works and what doesn't. And when it doesn't feel like something is correct, it says so. And so one of the subtler things that I've seen come out that you will also see is that this model has some opinions on what is correct and what is incorrect, whether you're saying it or whether the model is saying it. And that makes the model less like a hyperactive squirrel on Adderall and more like a thoughtful colleague, a colleague that has opinions, a colleague that can be persuaded, but a colleague that will also push back sometimes and say, I don't think that's quite correct. And that is a very tough balance to strike. And if Claude has been able to strike that balance with this new model, it is a very good sign for us because it helps us to have a more professional relationship with AI where we're yelling at it less, we're trying to get it to be sort of focused and directed less, and we're more interested in how we can do good work together. And I'm excited about that because I really, for one, would like to stop telling my AI models, no, you did too much. No, you went too far in that direction. No, please stop it. I don't want to be the only one that's absolutely right around here. And so my hope is that this new model becomes a new decisioning baseline for work. So let me unpack that a little bit. I think that we reached a productivity baseline with Opus 4.1 for people who care about work. It is possible to be productive, not just in conversation, but with docs and sheets and code and deck in Opus 4.1, which was Claude's previous model. Now with this model, we don't just go from being productive to perfect. We go from being productive to decisioning. And this gets at the heart of what I've been saying this entire time. This model sets you up to focus your time on making decisions that matter because the work it produces is really clear. And that's true in the chat as much as it's true in any output format that you want to select. That's what I'm excited about because it feels like we're moving from a worker's buddy that works alongside you and gets you okay drafts to a more professional colleague that is designed to help set you up to save time and make really smart decisions. That makes me really excited for the future because I would love to have an AI colleague that's more like that. And I want more interactions that keep me closer to the work and that help me to feel like I'm doing quality work. Because we humans take a sense of pride in that. I know you might not have expected this video to go there. You might think, well, Nate's gonna just talk about the AI model and how amazing it is and how it automates things. And it is amazing. And clearly it automates a lot if it can go in one shot from 66 pages of customer quotes to a PowerPoint. 
But that's not really why it matters. It matters because it pulls the humans closer to the work. We can work as colleagues together because of the ability to push back and to think clearly and to express itself well. And ultimately, the work itself is higher quality and much faster in a way that we can be proud of as people because we touched it and delivered our unique stamp of perspective on it, the domain experience we have, the, the metabolized sense of integrity, the metabolized sense of instinct that we have as people who have expertise in our particular area. This Claude model makes it easier for our expertise to shine through. So have fun, check it out, let me know what you think. I'm still early in my testing, obviously. I've had it for a few days. I'm really excited about it. Let me know. Cheers and good luck.